There has been a lot of controversy. This is a very important thing. We are trying to de-blur this galaxy image. A lot of other physics informed deep learning based models. Hello and welcome everyone to this new video. And this video is a special one because for the very first time, we have an expert in the field of artificial intelligence coming to this channel to chat about AI in general and how AI will be changing the world and especially impacting astronomy. So recently there has been a huge advancement in AI as all of you have seen. And in this video, I'll sort of talk about the application where we are interested in de-blurring some of the astronomical images. Now, let me first put the problem statement out there. So the problem is, although the Earth's atmosphere is really important for sustaining life as we know, but it's a huge pain for astronomers who are trying to study distant objects. The reason for that is different layers of atmosphere have different densities and are at different temperatures. And also there are multiple elements and compounds present in the atmosphere. So when light from a distant object comes through the atmosphere, it gets scattered, absorbed at different directions, thereby sort of blurring the image that we see. Now this is a problem because let's say for an astronomer who's trying to study a galaxy, blurry images would actually result in distorting the actual shape of the galaxy. If you're trying to resolve a particular part of the galaxy and the image itself is blurred and distorted, you wouldn't be able to do the science that you wanted to do, thereby making your measurements useless. Now this is one of the reasons why the best optical telescopes in the world are set at high altitudes and dry conditions because they are trying to avoid a lot of the atmosphere and also making sure that the atmosphere after that particular altitude is more or less dry and consistent. Now think of this problem as like standing at the bottom of a swimming pool and looking upwards. If you look up you will see everything over there is sort of distorted. The same logic sort of follows here. Now what astronomers have recently done is they have basically applied this machine learning algorithm to de-blur images. Now you might ask what is so special about it and the reason why this is so special is because they are training the AI using sophisticated astronomical simulation data and these simulations are based on real physics that have been encoded in them. So after generating hundreds of thousands of simulated images the AI is being trained on them and hence the predictions that the AI is making is much cleaner, faster and in a more efficient way. Overall, the process is much reliable. So what I'm going to do next is bring over someone who is a specialist in the field of AI and let him explain AI machine learning and what does it mean by training the AI in general. Let's chat with Shantan. So I just wanted to start off this video by asking you to introduce yourself to everyone who's watching. Hi everyone, I'm Shantan Das and I'm doing my masters at uh, Queen's University in the electrical department. I basically work on deep fake detection, facial generation and all such related topics. So I guess I just wanted to start off by asking as someone who is working in the field of AI, what, how would you define like artificial intelligence in your words? So, in very simple words, I feel that artificial intelligence means there is a system of computers which are trying to mimic human intelligence. The way artificial intelligence works is and try to uh, learn some patterns or relationships in the data. So uh, first and foremost, you're trying to understand how it ingests data, tries to make analysis out of it and it makes some predictions out of it. So you can say that AI is more of an umbrella term and within AI there are multiple subfields. I guess the most important one is machine learning. But this is a nice way to sort of ask the other question is how would you like fundamentally differentiate AI, ML and within these terms we also hear about neural networks. So if you could like maybe talk a little bit how they're different and what are neural networks. So first and foremost, uh, we should address the elephant in the room is that AI is more of an umbrella term and within AI there are multiple subsets that that get misconstrued as uh, AI as well. Very popular subset is your machine learning. So machine learning is the specific subset of AI which deals with learning from data without being explicitly told how to learn from data. So for example, you're trying to detect a dog as a cat from a camera video. So in this kind of scenario, the models or the machine learning model, so to say, are fed with various data of cat, dogs and other classes if they are required. 
and then it is told okay so these are dark images so what that is called is called labeling of data and if it is done with the supply of labels it's called supervised machine learning if it's done without any supervision or any sort of ground truth or labels they call it unsupervised machine learning machine learning is that part of ai which deals with learning relationships and patterns from the data that's great so i think the other question that i would like to know the answer of is what are like neural networks fundamentally because as you said we need to train the um the machine machine learning model yeah. machine learning models using different like pictures let's say if you're trying to trying to make it recognize something then we need to we need to train it with pictures so how does like neural networks come in this picture so neural networks are a very i won't say a very new version of uh, machine learning due to the rapid advent of new graphic processing units and other compute capabilities we are seeing a more new upsurging of neural networks so neural networks are basically a sort of machine learning models which are based on the human brain i would not say that we entirely know how the constitution of the brain, human brain is but the neural networks are basically matrix operations that try to uh, manipulate the uh, input matrix training of neural network is happening in multiple ways one of the most important way is the gradient optimization and that is what we generally call as training a machine learning model if we talk about training yes, a machine that, learning model yeah. we can say that we are performing gradient based optimization what happens is we feed data into the neural network uh, be th that data could be audio signals that data could be satellite images okay. that data could be any sort of text data we feed this data to the neural networks and each neural network consists of multiple layers there is a input layer there is a hidden layer and then there is a, a final layer so neural networks generally also have something called an activation function interlaced between them so you can call that these are linear operators where we are performing matrix multiplication you don't allow all sorts of information to flow into the next layer so this is generally how a constitution of a general uh, neural network looks like so i guess since we also discuss about astronomy and the whole purpose of this video is to basically understand the use of ai in the field of astronomy so for the paper that i was talking before the one which is basically deblurring all the astronomical images it's using something called the admm model uh, and it says it's a machine learning algorithm that uh, trains the uh, neural networks using real physics simulations of the atmosphere to make the correct corrections so if you could like go a little bit inside what the admm model is and how is it like acting in this particular case so firstly let's uh, address what admm is so the original problem here is that we are trying to deblur these galaxy images and this deblurring problem is also called the deconvolution of psf psf means is the response of the imaging system to the galactic point source of light so in our case the, these galaxies you can call since they are at almost infinity you can mm -hmm. call these are point sources of light mm -hmm. and because of that uh, you don't have an accurate display of the image mm -hmm. rather you have a psf and a lot of people in the literature have tried to use something called the admm which is called alternating uh, direction of method of multiplier what this specific paper yeah. does is yeah. it tries to use physics informed deep learning mimic the usage of admm through a machine learning model here which in this case is a denoiser model so okay. what it is trying to do is they talk about something called plug and play and unrolling of admm they are trying to have a machine learning model where they are mentioning that every layer in the machine learning model corresponds to one stage of admm operation so if i say that uh, we are trying to do five admms for example five units of admm you are trying to have a five layered uh, machine learning denoiser uh, model here where every layer is performing some uh, unro it, that's why it's called unrolled admm because it's like unrolled the multiple admms mm -hmm. is not consolidated together so every layer is like one step into the admm process so you complete one layer of processing you complete one step of the admm operation and there have been a lot of other physics informed deep learning based models so when we talk about fluid mechanics there are also a lot of fluid mechanics um, problems like this problem of turbulent flow mm. where they are using a lot of uh, 
deep learning based model denoising of satellite images as well in this case uh, they mentioned something called a priori iteration fixing okay. so what they are trying to show is that the iteration for the optimization is decided before you even perform the iteration of the optimization mm. so what they mention is for example as i mentioned that you have five units of admm so why did i say five we as the people who are doing the research we are going to fix the fix the uh, number of iterations that we are going to perform and then that is going to guide how long or how big our admm net which is the mo model they used in this yeah. paper is going to be and then they use admm net to perform the admm operation to get us the reconstructed unblurred images in this case that gives a lot of idea about how the entire system works which brings me to my next question is basically are these learning algorithms prone to errors and in the recent times we have seen how the common uh, text based uh, ai which is the chat gpt has a tendency to make up data of its own which might not be the actual case uh, or the actual fact so uh, can we like trust these ai systems this machine learning systems completely even though we are training them with realistic data sets so firstly if we localize the answer to yeah. what it pertains to this mm -hmm. specific problem or this specific paper mm -hmm. well they in this paper they mentioned that they are trying to remove additive noise from these right. images right yes. so we know additive noise is somewhat like gaussian noise which yes. we call as additive white gaussian noise yes. Yes. right and so additive noise is additive in nature you are just basically adding some noise mm -hmm. to the pixels of each of the pixels in the image mm -hmm. right but we also know that a lot of astronomical images we also have something called multiplicative noise okay. or what we call as gamma noise right so gamma noise follows follows the gamma distribution instead of the gaussian distribution and it is a multiplicative nature so this method if we talk about pitfalls it doesn't talk about multiplicative nature of noise okay. and how do we denoise images which have multiplicative nature of noise and when it comes to the general broader problem of whether we can totally trust these models we definitely cannot trust these models to a extent like there is a threshold after which we cannot trust them so so chat gpt is basically a large language model and it was trained on a huge corpus of text okay. text code different sorts of qu questions mm. conversations mm. from all over the internet so now what it is doing so it has already been trained after that it has since then just been inferencing what we call as been giving out hallucinating answers or giving out answers so we are just feeding our own inputs and it is just uh, trying to give out the answers that it thinks is correct uh, there is something called data bias there is also something called algorithmic bias so keeping to these two in mind let's uh, like let's explain each of them so when it comes to algorithm bias um, there are some specific processing that this uh, algorithm like for example some algorithm does that could not give out the entire information about something in another aspect right okay. so for example uh, you have a facial al facial recognition network right mm -hmm. you are creating a facial recognition software mm -hmm. and the problem is that you are trying to keep you are saying that anything above the intensity of um, 128 in the image right okay is is like uh, this person or that person right i see so what if there is a dark skinned person like so to say like the intensity could be below 128 right, yes. out of 255 pixels then you would so this is just a very bare okay. bones example there is also something called data bias mm -hmm. so if you have for example you're training a facial recognition uh, network and uh, what happens is for example you are just training it on one ethnicity of people then it would not be able to give you the best predictions for people from the other ethnicity so for example the network was trained only on caucasian faces okay um, what happens when someone from the uh, african descent or someone from the um, asian, asian descent yes. or some southeast asian south asians descent also co come under the scanner or some sort of webcam mm -hmm. it could not be able to Uh, recognize that properly and also there have been a lot of controversies linked to that so there was one classic example when an african man was classified as a gorilla it's a very uh, bad example and we really uh, mm. condemn this kind of uh, machine learning systems and there is still a long way to go we need to reorient the data that we have we need to use more data more verified more data samples, more samples, 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 samples from samples difference yes. so there's something called diversity of data so there okay. should be more diversity in the data okay. 
so that there is much more informed decision so that, that you're not the biasing the data set with one particular sure. like sample of data. so you you are having yeah. so that ai makes more di- informed decisions gotcha. okay. when it's trying to say that this is this person this is that person so I the the way forward for ai and humanity right. is that we need to have more responsible ai there should be a lot of uh, regulation on ai this is a very yeah. important thing Okay. both governments non profit organizations and organizations hmm. like deep mind google amazon open ai and anyone who is working in this sector mm-hmm. making ai models and stuff should definitely create a chart of guidelines on okay. what kind of things that each model should follow okay so i think uh, we are slowly reaching towards the end of our discussion so my question that i'm coming to you is basically do you ever think like ai in the future will reach such such a stage that we need to be worried about them or do you think like they can be 100 100% like independent working on their own or will there always be some kind of a human supervision going required in order to like finally extract out the kind of data you need so yeah i think will ai ever get dangerous enough that it might be something to think about to my personal opinion i believe that ai has more things to help humanity than to deliver wrong things so what i feel is that you we can leverage ai to its maximum so that we can remove the mindless work or so what we call as automation because ai just as a software is not going to replace everything we'll sort of end the discussion here and then thank you so much for giving your time and sure. discussing about ai so i'll try to like uh, probably summarize some of the points that you said together and also maybe post just an uncut version for people who are more interested into this particular topic again thank you so much shankar thank yeah. you it's, it's so i hope yeah, you yeah. guys got some good gold nuggets from the discussion that i had with shankar i'm pretty sure by now you guys have a decent surface level idea of what ai and ml is doing so if you found this video useful please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so that this way i can push out more informative content like this and this experience was great because i got to chat with my friends who are actively working in different fields of science and what particularly excites me is how we can apply the different branches of engineering and computer science into astronomy to make it even better as someone who works with a lot of instruments on a day to day basis I really look forward to how AI can have a big impact on astronomy. So thanks everyone for sticking out so long. I'll catch you guys in the next one very soon.